in this video we're going to look at these four functions and we're going to think about the domain of each of them and then we're going to use some of the vocabulary that we've talked about open, closed, bounded, and unbounded to describe the domains of these functions. All right so for this first function when I think about the domain uh, I want to think about the set of all x, y such that that expression inside the radical on the denominator would need to be greater than zero. I don't want it to be negative uh, because that would cause me to be taking the square root of a negative number so I'd get an imaginary output so we want real number outputs. I also don't want that expression inside the radical to be equal to zero because that would create zero on the denominator of the fraction. So there's my domain. Uh, in thinking about that domain we're going to maybe just work with the inequality that I have here. So I'd maybe add 4x squared and 9y squared to both sides so I'd have 144 it's greater than 4x squared plus 9y squared and I might recognize uh, that if that had an equal sign there that that would be an ellipse. So I'm going to divide through by 144 and just kind of rearrange uh, the terms a little bit here. Uh, okay so when I have 4x squared over 144 that reduces to x squared over 36 and then uh, 9y squared over 144 will reduce to y squared over 16 and then I got to make sure I have my inequality going the correct direction here so this smaller end should be uh, toward the x's and y's here. Uh, all right so if I want to think about the graph of that you don't necessarily have to think about the graph of that but it can be helpful in thinking about the uh, vocabulary words here so the graph of that would be an ellipse that goes from negative 6 to 6 in the x direction and negative 4 to 4 in the y direction and I drew a dashed uh, edge for that ellipse because uh, that actual ellipse, the points on the ellipse are not included. So when I think about this region, any point that's inside that region, so for example 1, 1 would be an interior point of that region, and any point that's actually on the dashed edge that I drew, so for example 6, 0, that would be an example of a boundary point. Okay, and so then if I want to think about classifying this region in terms of being open or closed, uh, I'm really thinking about whether the boundary is included or not. And if you have trouble remembering these words, just think back to open and closed intervals. So on an open interval, the edges of the interval are not included. And the same thing here for an open region. Uh, this is an open region because none of the boundary is included. None of the boundary points for this region are included. So if I'm trying to decide if this region is open or closed or neither or both, I want to think about whether the boundary is included or not. So the boundary is not included here. None of the boundary is included. So this would be an open region. And then if I also want to think about whether this region is bounded or unbounded, what I want to think about there is whether the distances go off to infinity or not. So if you look at the region, this is when drawing a graph of the region can be especially helpful. If you look at that picture of the region, you might notice that all of those points are 12 units away from each other or less. The farthest points away from each other would be the points kind of at either end of the long axis of the ellipse and those would be about a little less than 12 units away from each other. So this region, none of the distances go off to infinity. Everything stays finite here. So we would say that this region is bounded. That's about the distances going off to infinity or not. The distances here are all finite. So this is a bounded region. So again, you don't have to draw the pictures, but that can be especially helpful in thinking about the region. All right, so for this next one here, uh, the domain is going to be the set of all x, y, such that that expression inside the radical, in this case I just need that to be greater than or equal to zero. It's not in the denominator, so it's okay if that expression is equal to zero. All right, and if I just work with that inequality and rearrange a little bit, I'll get x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to 1 x squared plus y squared equals 1 is a circle of radius 1. I drew that solid because my inequality does have the or equal to part there. So a circle of radius 1 center of the origin. And then the points that uh, satisfy the inequality would be the points outside that circle where x squared plus y squared is greater than 1. 
Alright, so again, in thinking about interior points and boundary points, interior points would be any points that are in this shaded region out here. So for example, the point 2, 2 is an interior point of this region. That's in the part that I shaded. Uh, and then any point kind of on the edge of where I've shaded, so any point that would be on this circle, so for example, the point 1, 0 is a boundary point. And so you want to be able to identify interior points and boundary points and then think about is the boundary included or not? This boundary is included, so this would be a closed region, just like a closed interval on a number line. A closed interval is one that does include its boundary. This is a closed region because the boundary is included. All of the boundary points are included. And then when I think about whether this region is bounded or unbounded, I want to think about those distances, whether the distances between the points in the region stay finite or go off to infinity. And because this region extends forever outward from that circle of radius 1, this is an unbounded region uh, because the distances get infinite. So the bounded and unbounded is about whether the distances stay finite or go infinite. So you can think about that in terms of intervals also. Uh, whether you've got a bounded interval would be one that's where everything's finite, so for example from 3 to 5, and unbounded would be where the end of that interval maybe goes off to infinity, so the distances get infinite on this one. Okay, for this next one, our domain would be the set of all x, y such that that denominator is not 0, but that denominator is never going to be 0. There are no ordered pairs, x and y, that I can plug in that would make that denominator equal to 0. Everything's plus, I'm squaring the x's and the y's, and I'm adding 1. So that denominator is never going to be 0. So in this case, the domain is just all of R2. Every point in R2 is the domain. So everything here. So for this region, every point, every point that you can think of, every ordered pair in R2 is an interior point. And so this region also has no boundary points. There's no edge to this region. So this is one of those regions where uh, the definition about boundary points being included or not included, you have to go back and look carefully at that definition. Uh, the definition of open and closed, an open region says every point that is a boundary point is not included in the region. And a closed region says every point that is a boundary point of the region is included. Because this one has no boundary points, both of those definitions are actually true. So this is a region, it's kind of a strange region, region that is both open and closed. So that's kind of a strange definition there. But basically, if you have a region that has no boundary points, then both of those definitions hold. And so it would be both open and closed. Uh, all right, and then thinking about whether the region is bounded or unbounded, again, remembering that those have to do with distances. So just like the last example that we looked at, because those distances go off to infinity, this region would be unbounded. The distances go off to infinity. Okay, one more here. I'm going to scroll up so I have a little bit more space for this one. This one's got a lot going on with it when I think about the domain for this one here. Uh, I have a denominator. I need to make sure that the y is greater than 0. Uh, positive y values so that I'm not taking the square root of a negative number, and I also don't want my denominator to be 0, so I don't want y to equal 0. And then the other issue with the domain here is that this expression inside the sine inverse function needs to be between negative 1 and 1, can be equal to each of those, but between negative 1 and 1. So I've got a lot kind of going on here with the domain, really two different inequalities to think about, and then the one inequality is a compound inequality, I've got numbers on both ends of that. So I'm going to work on this inequality up here, I'm going to subtract x squared uh, from everywhere on this inequality, so I have negative 1 minus x squared is less than or equal to negative y less than or equal to 1 minus x squared. And then I would like to solve that for y, so I'd like to multiply or divide through by negative 1. Remember when you do that, it's going to flip the inequalities. 
So I'll have 1 plus x squared is greater than or equal to y, and that will be greater than or equal to negative 1 plus x squared, or I'll just write that as x squared minus 1. So I multiplied through by negative 1, or divided through by negative 1, to get the y by itself. Okay, so in thinking about this, I really have three different inequalities to think about here. Uh, I've got y less than or equal to 1 plus x squared, and I also have to be sure that the y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 1, and I have y greater than 0. So my domain is going to be the region where all of those inequalities hold. I'm going to start with the first two here. y equals 1 plus x squared is a parabola in the xy planes. y equals x squared is a parabola with vertex at 1 in the xy plane y equals x squared minus 1 is a parabola with vertex at negative 1 in the xy plane. So I've drawn the two parabolas y equals 1 plus x squared and y equals x squared minus 1. And uh, what I need is the y values that are less than or equal to the first parabola and greater than or equal to the second parabola. So that would be the region all between those two parabolas there. So if I only had the two parabolas at the top here, I'd be looking at the region between those two parabolas. But I also need to pay attention to this last one here, y greater than 0. So I'm actually going to erase a little bit of my shading that I've already done here. y greater than 0, if y is equal to 0, that would be y equals 0 would be the x-axis here. I want y greater than 0. I'm drawing a dashed boundary there because we would not include when y is equal to 0. And then I want the region where y is greater than 0. So that would be the region above that. So I'm going to erase the shading that I have down here and I'll just shade this in a little better. I want the region between the two parabolas but above the x-axis. So that's my region right there. Okay, so I've got a lot of points here to think about. I've got interior points, any point that's inside my shaded region would be an interior point. So the point, for example, 1 comma uh, 1 is in that shaded region. Uh, if I go over 1 and up 1, if I think about where these two parabolas are at here, 1, 1 will be between those shaded regions. The upper parabola goes through the point 1, 2, and the lower parabola is here at 1, 0. So 1, 1 would be in there. That's an interior point. Uh, 1, 0, let me do that in a different color here. 1, 0 is actually a boundary point of the region. And 1, 2 is also a boundary point of the region. That's a point that's on one of those parabolas. Another boundary point of the region. Another boundary point of the region would be the point here at the origin. 0, 0 is another example of a boundary point. All right, so when I think about classifying this region in terms of open, closed, bounded, or unbounded, in order to think about open and closed, in order to think about open and closed, I want to think about whether the boundary is included or not. So you're thinking about, is the boundary included? And for this region here, some of the boundary points are included, where I drew that solid boundary uh, so along the parabola here and where I have solid boundary for the region, so what I just highlighted there, those boundary points are included, but where I have the points that are on the x-axis, I'm just going to use a different color to emphasize that, those boundary points that are on the x-axis are not included in the region. So the answer here is some of them are, but some are not. So this would be an example of a region that is neither open nor closed because some of the boundary is included and some is not. And then when I think about bounded or unbounded, I want to think about those distances. And I do have some regions where uh, I have points that are close to each other, but the thing to focus on here would be on the ends there. With those ends going off to infinity, that's going to continue forever and ever. So I'm going to continue to get points farther and farther away from uh, other points in the region. And so this would be an unbounded region. That's about the distances staying finite or not. So in this case, the distances do not stay finite. So this is an unbounded region. All right, practice some homework like those.